My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. Hello, this is episode number 23 of the 120 Days to Jam Economics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall begin questions and answers under the theory of demand and elasticity of demand. If you still don't understand the theory of demand and elasticity of demand, please go back to the previous episodes because you need the knowledge to be able to follow us in the jam questions and answers. I am making use of the Flash Learners Jam application for these questions and answers. How about you get one for yourself? Use the YouTube description, visit flashlearners.com or search Flash Learners Jam app on Play Store or reach out to me directly for installation and activation instruction. Now let us see questions. A normal good with close substitutes is likely to have its price elasticity of demand to be dashed. A normal good with close substitutes. Now, normal goods are goods that as the price increases, the quantity will have to drop. Normal goods are goods that people buy. As their income increases, they buy more of such goods, which means how much you have determines how much of such goods you have. And the more money you have, the more of such goods you can afford. The opposite of normal good is of giving goods or inferior goods. For inferior goods, as your income increase, the quantity of such that you buy will drop. For example, okrika, bendan select. As your income low it reduces, you buy such things you wear, not bad. But as your income increases, you leave all those things. You begin to visit the boutique or buy branded clothes because all these ones are of higher quality and at least better than the one people have used before that you are buying. Now, close substitutes. For goods with close substitutes, the demand for one excludes the other. For example, Milo and Bonvita. What Milo can do, Bonvita can do it, which means they are close substitutes. If Bonvita misbehaves, we move to Milo. If Milo misbehaves, we move to Bonvita. And in goods with close substitutes, the price elasticity of demand is greater than one. Do you know why? If price for a good for A increases, the demand for A will drop drastically because people will rush to the substitute to B. So as the price of A increases, the quantity of A reduces drastically and the demand for B begins to increase. And for goods with close substitutes, a little increase in price will lead to a greater increase in quantity demanded. Which means if price increases by 5%, the quantity demanded can drop by 10%. So for such goods, they are fairly or relatively elastic. For normal goods, they are fairly or relatively elastic. And for fairly or relatively elastic, the price elasticity of demand should be greater than one. So this is for goods with close substitutes. That makes option C the correct option. They can check out other episodes to see what happens when elasticity is equal to unity, that is one. In this case, for an increase in price, there is an equivalent reduction in quantity demanded. If there is 10% increase in price, there will be exactly 10% decrease in quantity demanded. They are exactly proportional. It is not like fairly relative elastic or relatively elastic, where a little change in price will lead to a bigger change in quantity demanded. So, option C is the correct option. If the demand for one commodity excludes another, it is said to be dash. A. Complementary demand. B. Competitive demand. 
C. Composite demand and D. Derived demand. I explained this earlier, like a few minutes ago. I said that if the demand for one commodity excludes the other, then they are said to be alternatives. And when goods are alternatives, they are under competitive demand, which means you can what one can do, the other one can do it. So you can either get this or that, not the two, because they serve the same purpose. All except one is not an attribute to an upward sloping demand curve. Upward sloping demand curve is something like this. Upward sloping demand curve. The slope is positive. Now, upward sloping demand curve means as the price is increasing, the quantity demanded is also increasing. So this is sloping upward from left to right. What we make quantity to increase despite the fact that price is also increasing. One, for luxury items or ostentatious goods. For luxury goods, as the price is increasing, people will still buy. Example, Lamborghini, Bugatti, Porsche, iPhone, latest iPhone, because people buy such goods for class. Apart from that, war can make people buy more goods as the price is increasing. If there is war and price of things are increasing, you keep buying because you don't know whether you even see to buy tomorrow. You don't want to buy or uh, go out the next day. So you buy out of panic. That is panic buying. And depression, difference in elasticity, um, fear of future rise. Like, ah, since this one is going up now, tomorrow it may go higher. Let me just buy it now. So fear is going up. You have to buy and keep despite the hike in price because you might go there the next week and the price has doubled. So you buy as the price is gradually going up, which means war differences in elasticity and depression can make people buy goods while the price is increasing. Or it's, a, it's an attribute to an upward sloping demand curve, except on related goods. Ladies and gentlemen, even if you don't know A, B and C are correct, what does unrelated goods have to do with upward sloping demand curve? I don't know and you don't know. So we go with option D. Use the information below to answer this question. When commodity S was sold for 25 naira per unit, 50 units of commodity Y were purchased. Why 50? Then S increased to 50 naira. In this case, why demand fell to 20? First of all, this is relating two products. Two products. Now, what is happening to the two products? As the price of one product of the first one increases, like this, product A, the demand for the second one reduces. Price is increasing. Demand is reducing. So, let's say we have two products, A and B. What we make the demand for B reduce as the price of A is increasing? It cannot be because of substitutes. No. If they were substitutes, as the price of A is increasing, then the demand for the substitute will also increase because the demand for this first one is reducing. So, it cannot be because of substitutes. It can simply be because they are complements. For complementary goods, as the price of one increases, the demand for the second one will reduce. Example, stove and kerosene. They are complementary. So, as the price of stove goes very high, people are not able to afford stove. What will happen? The demand for kerosene, for cooking, will also go down. So, these are complementary goods. As seen in option D. From the diagram above, the price elasticity of demand is dash. As you can see, the graph of price to quantity is vertical, it's going up. What is happening? Price is not even affecting the quantity demanded. The quantity demanded is constant. So, a situation where price is not affecting the quantity demanded in any way, we say that it is zero elastic. 
or perfectly inelastic. Zero elastic or perfectly inelastic. That is what the graph on the curve above shows. Price is quantity is constant. Price is not even affecting the quantity. So option D is so so correct. And here it is a shift in the demand curve to the left illustrates dash. A shift. This is no shift in quantity demanded. This is shift in demand. So this is. You have something like this. Um, like this. Price is constant. For shift in demand, price doesn't affect. It is other factors. So you have something like this. A shift in demand to the left. This is right, right? This is left. So left means inward shift or backward shift. This is the first demand. This is the second demand. So a shift in demand to the left or inward represents a decrease in demand. Anytime you have shift, quantity should not come to play because quantity, uh, quantity demanded or change in quantity demanded does not shift the curve. It only leads to movement. Change in quantity demanded leads to movement along the demand curve. Only change in demand leads to shift. So this is shift in demand. And leftward means inward coming this way. As it's pushing this way, it represents a decrease in demand. Why this way? Like this. D1, D1, D2, D2. So if it's shifting this way, like this, D1, D2, this is outward shift or a shifting uh, right. In this case, this is an increase in demand. So uh, increase in demand has to do with favorable weather condition, increase in income of consumer, increase in population, favorable weather condition, and other factors, a said price. While this one will be due to unfavorable weather condition, reduction, in salary of consumers, decrease in population, and other factors other than price as well. Know that change in demand is not affected by price. Only change in quantity demanded deals with price. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you do find it helpful. How about you get your flash, let us jump out and start playing with further questions. See you in the next episode.